Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today we'll be talking remotely with Dr. Walter Short. Dr. Short is a hand surgeon who practices hand surgery at the SOS Hand and Wrist Surgery Center at the Syracuse Orthopedic Specialist in Syracuse, New York. Dr. Short is a recognized leader in the field of orthopedic hand surgery, publishing over 200 articles and scholarly presentations and receiving numerous research grants from the federal government while serving as a professor at Upstate Medical University. He's also recognized for premier patient care, having received a National Patient's Choice Award for three consecutive years and a five-star rating by Health Grades. Dr. Short attended medical school at Upstate Medical University, followed by a general surgery internship at the University of Connecticut and a surgical orthopedic residency at Upstate Medical University. Dr. Short continued his education with a hand fellowship at Yale University and the University of Connecticut. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Short. Thank you for having me today. Dr. Short, what I thought we would talk about uh, during the next few minutes is a, is a condition of the wrist called Kindbox disease. Um, so let's start by telling people exactly what that, that, that name means. Kindbox uh, disease is a condition in the wrist uh, where one of the uh, small bones in the wrist called the lunate, uh, for some unknown reason, loses its uh, blood supply. It's named after Otto uh, Kindbach, who uh, I believe was either an Austrian or a German uh, surgeon who first uh, described the condition uh, probably a uh, hundred years ago. Uh, uh, what happens is this is typically a condition more in a younger population uh, uh, and what happens is that they develop a uh, gradual onset of wrist pain and it doesn't necessarily have to do with uh, uh, trauma. They have uh, swelling uh, to some mild degree over the uh, back of the wrist. They have uh, pain. They usually have limited motion. And uh, when they see the doctor and they get x-rays, then uh, you see uh, changes uh, in some cases, in the appearance of this bone called the lunate. The lunate is one of the small bones. Uh, it looks like a half moon or crescent shaped. And uh, if it loses its blood supply, the bone becomes soft and misshapen. And so the uh, uh, half moon shape uh, becomes distorted. Well, how, how, how do we make the diagnosis of uh, Kindbox disease? I mean, what do you do as a hand surgeon to try to see what's going on? Uh, in many cases, uh, plain x-rays will show the uh, change in the uh, appearance of this bone, uh, which is in the center of the wrist. Uh, if they have uh, persistent pain and x-rays are normal, then an MRI uh, uh, is uh, very sensitive to uh, making a diagnosis of Keenbox disease. Now, what should a patient expect? You know, if, if this patient has Kindbox disease and, and has pain with, with heavy use of the wrist, as you've described in the early stages, is this the sort of thing that's going to heal? Is this already set in motion a problem that is going to continue? Or how should a patient approach this? In the majority of cases, uh, once they develop the pain and there's changes on the x-ray, the disease process is already uh, uh, become in place and uh, the um, bone has uh, started to become somewhat misshapen uh, and uh, you start to develop a vicious cycle of uh, no blood supply to the bone. The bone is uh, becoming softer, is becoming misshapen and uh, they develop more and more symptoms. Um, if you get an x-ray and the x-ray looks normal, but uh, an MRI shows uh, uh, distinctive changes of uh, Keenbox disease, uh, that um, 
uh, is usually one of the earlier stages of Keenbox disease. And um, uh, if treated by um, inserting a blood vessel in that bone, uh, usually uh, is successful in resolving the problem. So th this procedure that you're talking about that uses the blood vessel transplant that you've just described, that's done in the early stages or was that done at any stage of Kinebox? The uh, uh, later stages, what happens is that the bone becomes misshapen, other bones start to migrate into, uh, migrate out of their normal position. Uh, the uh, lunate, which is a bone that's involved, uh, eventually becomes soft enough that it starts to break apart into smaller pieces. And when that happens, uh, it is too late to in insert a blood vessel into the bone. Well, you know, it's, in, it's interesting because uh, these, this disease has been known about for years and years and years. Are there any theories about why people develop Kindbox disease? Uh, there, it's been associated with uh, a couple of variations in the wrist. Uh, uh, the two bones in the forearm, the radius and the ulna, are the two long bones in the forearm. And typically, those bones are of equal length. Uh, there appears uh, in at least North America that uh, there is an association uh, between Keenbox disease and patients who have a radius which is slightly longer than the ulna, which is the other bone in the forearm. Uh, why this uh, contributes to Keenbox, we don't know. Um, and and uh, to tell you the truth, we don't really know uh, the underlying cause of Keenbox disease. We know that the uh, uh, blood supply to the bone has been lost, uh, but uh, we have uh, a lot of theories. The uh, most popular theory at this time is that there's been multiple small traumas to the bone, and eventually the, the blood supply is uh, diminished or obliterated from these multiple small injuries. But uh, the answer is uh, still not there yet. Well, Dr. Short, it seems like that in the early stages we have a reasonable treatment, and that is the revascularization, revascularization procedure that you've just described, where you actually transplant a uh, blood vessel into that bone and reestablish uh, blood supply. What if that's not possible? What other treatment options do patients have that uh, are beyond that stage? Uh, there's uh, multiple other treatments uh, other than uh, putting a blood vessel into the bone. Uh, one option is to uh, equalize the uh, lengths of the bone in the forearm so that you make it so the radius and the ulna are of equal lengths. Uh, and that uh, decreases the forces on the lunate. And when that happens, it allows the uh, lunate to uh, 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 not become misshapen. It allows it to uh, obtain uh, uh, a new blood supply and restore its strength. Uh, you can uh, fuse or connect other bones around the lunate. And when you do that, that takes the pressure off the lunate uh, and allows it to uh, obtain a, um, a new uh, blood supply. Uh, and it redirects the forces around that weakened bone uh, to other areas of the wrist. You can also shorten uh, some of the bones within the uh, wrist itself. Uh, which uh, takes the uh, forces or pressure off the lunate and allows it to uh, uh, regain a blood supply. Now, all of these procedures, you've mentioned that it allows the, the lunate to regain a blood supply. Do these procedures work if, if the lunate does not regain a normal blood supply? Uh, eventually, uh, the lunate will uh, stabilize to some degree and will uh, regain some blood vessel. The problem is that there's a race between 
regaining a blood supply and uh, 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 having the uh, bone become so soft or misshapen that uh, the um, movement of the wrist and the movement of these bones is so distorted that it uh, it's something that you you can't restore normal function to the wrist because this lunate has become so misshapen or distorted. And what's the treatment options for, for that stage? When, when a patient reaches that stage where they haven't had any treatment, for example, or perhaps the, the earlier treatments have failed to revascularize the lunate, what's, what's the options that they have at that point? Well, the options uh, at that point in time are to uh, uh, completely fuse the wrist, you can uh, uh, fuse or connect several of the bones in the wrist. Uh, these uh, two options either eliminate motion in the wrist or greatly uh, decrease motion in the wrist. And uh, uh, that has a benefit of uh, decreasing or eliminating the pain, but it also decreases the motion. Um, there's also a procedure where you remove several of the bones in the wrist, including the lunate, which is the distorted one. That's called a proximal row carpectomy, where you take out one row of bones in the wrist. And uh, that also has its advocates uh, and uh, has a uh, fairly good track record as far as maintaining some motion and uh, decreasing pain. So it seems like to me that, that the, the salvage procedures that you've mentioned, the, the total wrist fusion, which in some ways is the trade-off is, is eliminate motion uh, completely, get rid of most of the pain, give you a very strong stable wrist, and the proximal row carpectomy, which you're hoping, as I understand, to try and preserve some of the motion in the wrist, but perhaps give up some of the strength in the wrist. So people that, that may need motion more than strength are better off with a proximal row carpectomy and people that, for example, a laborer who relies on strength and stability of the wrist may be better off with a, a wrist fusion? A am I on right track there? Yes, you are. Uh, uh, proximal row carpectomy uh, maintains uh, some motion. Uh, it uh, probably doesn't restore full strength, uh, whereas a wrist fusion will uh, uh, give uh, the wrist a stability, it will diminish pain, but the trade-off is that they have no motion. Well, Dr. Short, I think this has been a very good discussion about Kleinbox disease, and I, I think the take-home message here is that we probably still don't know what causes um, the lunate to lose its blood supply, but we seem to understand what what that means to a patient as 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 you go through life. and. We also understand what, what seems to work at different times um, in terms of treatment, whether it's in the early stages and the goal is to try to restore the situation back to normal as, most, as best possible, or in the later stages where you're really interested in reducing pain and stabilizing the wrist and you may have to accept a, uh, an outcome in terms of, of the surgical procedure that's maybe not normal but improves the situation. So is there anything else that you would like for patients to know about this disease process that you would advise in terms of, of how they should approach this if, if they find themselves with this disease? Uh, if they find that themselves uh, having this diagnosis of Keenbox disease, it's important to seek treatment immediately because as time goes on, the, and the longer the bone stays without a blood vessel or stays without a blood supply, the more distorted the bone is going to be and the less uh, options they have available to restore their uh, wrist to normalcy. So it's important to uh, see a, a hand surgeon uh, 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 immediately so that they can uh, have the full complement of uh, treatment options available to them. Well, I think that's good advice, and I, I do think that this is one of those disease processes that has long-term ramifications. So um, I think you're, you're, you're right in terms of uh, telling people to, to, to get in to see an expert early on in the process. So thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me.